And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look, a preview at a game called Civility. Uh, which, <laughs> it sounds like you're supposed to be nice to other people, but no, this is about raising a city from obscurity to greatness. But what's interesting about this game is each person starts with a different kind of city. You might start with a modern city, you might start with a utopian city, you might start with a stone age city. And each city has different things going on for it, different abilities, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Let me show you how the game plays. Now I want to point out, as with all my previews, that this is very much a prototype. In fact, it's good. the game is going to look quite a bit different than it is now. We're just showing you this so that you can see how the game works, okay? And so each player has two boards. One represents their city board. So for example, here's a medieval city board, and then there's another city board here on the, on the board itself. Okay, so we have medieval, fantasy, utopia, early men. We could have used a modern one also if we wanted to. Each of these comes with a playing piece, whatever it will be, that will represent your army. And then each of these has stats and different ability here. Uh, you can see that you have an army, this technology, education, health, economy, and government. Each of these is considered a department. And each of these has a different number to start. The game uses dice, but uh, I was told that they'll probably use dials in the original game. They can go up to a maximum of five, and they'll start at different levels. Notice the medieval one here starts at small, low levels, but not as low as the early men starts, where all their stuff starts at ones on their board. Uh, also, players keep track of the number of defenders that they have on the board. Now players are trying to win, of course, and by winning you are need, you're going to start at status 0 and you need to get to status 5. As you get to each status here, you will get a special ability and the special abilities for the ones who start with lower department levels is better than the ones who start with higher department levels, thus kind of evening out the game. For example, once I get the status 1 here as medieval, I can hold an extra card. Once I get the status 2, my army is doubled in battle. While the Utopian, when they get the status 2, you can, they can no longer be attacked. Once I get to status 3, I can play an extra card each turn. Instead of playing 2 cards, I can play 3. And in status 4, I can move an army for free at one point. And status 5, of course, is victory. Now that's just for this um, army. Each one is different. Now one player is chosen to go first each round. And that player is going to take a diplomat chip to show that they go first. That player is going to roll 3 dice in a 4 player game. You always roll 1 dice less than the number of players. At that point, you are going to take one of those dice and use it, or you can take a die and save it. You have a little dial, so let's say I take a four, I can take the four and save it, keeping it in front of me to use it on a later turn. Or I can choose not to take a die at all, but if I do that, I have to lower my depart one of my department levels. So probably not worth it. Now, of course, there's only three dice that are available. So if it comes, obviously, with four players, the fourth player likely is not going to have a die. So if he has no die to take, he'll be able to draw two event cards. There's a whole pile of event cards, and I'll talk about those in a bit. One of the things that you're trying to do is you're trying, as I said, you're trying to get your status up. And so at the beginning of each round, you'll turn the top status over. If it's a battle status, you'll put it here in secondary status, and you'll turn over another one. So for example, to accomplish this, you need to trade in one government and four economy. And that means you would actually lower your levels. If you did that, you get to go up a status. Or here, if you win a battle without using any cards, you get to go up a status. And so there's lots of different ones here. Trade in three army and three defense. Uh, roll a straight. Um, trade in two economy, two health, and two government. So there's different things, and you're trying to accomplish those goals each round. Now, when you use the die, you will use the number on the die and place it somewhere on the actions on the board. Let's take a look at these actions. You can see a 1, 2, or 3 lets you draw a card. A 4 lets you build a bridge. Each player has two bridges, and you need to use those bridges to attack other players. So you'll be building bridges by putting them in front of other players. Um, uh, a 5 lets you upgrade your city. You can take one of your departments, except for government, and upgrade it. 6 lets you build a bridge or attack another player. Uh, you have to have your army move there, and you can move your army with any die. You can recruit defenders with any die. So let's say I rolled double threes. I would use one of those here to recruit three defenders. That's the only way that you can do that. 
Then there's some combos here. Now combos are awesomely powerful, but they're difficult to get. Essentially, you need to take, you need to save one of the die from a, and then use that save die with the, another die in a future turn. But if you get a one and a three combo, you will be able to take the steal a turn chip, which lets you essentially play it in the future on someone else's turn, and you play their turn for them, making their decisions, taking their hand of cards. Attack anytime basically lets you attack anytime you want. Um, so what you're going to be trying to do is you're trying to attack with your armies and you'll be moving an armies around to other players boards and when if there's the army there and a board there you will attack them you will add your army plus your health defenders will add their defenders and if you win the battle then that can help you accomplish some of your statuses also if you win a battle on the attack every single one of your departments except government goes up one while if the defender wins an attack he gets to pick two of his things to go up before a battle, each player is allowed to play cards from their hand. Many of the action cards will allow you, like for example, this one here says plus one defender. Many of the other action cards, since we're on the subject of action cards, let you, like this one here lets you build a bridge. This one lets you move an army and attack, but I need to use a three die to do it. So some of the cards, when you play them, instead of putting a die on the board, I will play a card from my hand and use one of the dice to basically target that card, to utilize that card. Other cards in the action deck are world events. When these are drawn, they're played immediately. Moment of peace, all armies return home. Famine, everyone rolls. Discard half that number of cards. Uh, here's one you can upgrade a department level, except government. Move an army. Steal a card. Move an army, build a bridge. Here's a plus two attack. A plus one attack. Move an army and attack. Upgrade government. One of the few ways to upgrade government. So there's lots of different cards in the game. There's a few world events, but most of them have to do with battles or let you take extra actions. There's also a couple of these cards that give you abilities. These let you turn in two cards to upgrade the department. Normally it's three that you would discard, but this lets you turn in any two to upgrade one of your departments by one. And so that's essentially how the game works. At the end of each turn, you see if anybody can accomplish the status cards in the middle to move up their status. You also will look on the side of the board at these perks. If you have the highest government, you'll take the government perk. that lets you draw an extra card every turn. The technology perk, if you have the highest technology where you can recall the army back home. Education, you can see the next status card coming. Um, the economy perk, hold two extra cards in your hand. Your hand limit goes up. There's also two pacifist perks. You only get these if you make it to status level three and haven't attacked anybody, which will be hard to do if you're someone who likes to attack other people. But if you do, you will get these special abilities, gain department levels twice as fast and so on. So each round will go until one player has reached status five. So remember at the beginning of the round, you turn over a new status. Players will utilize the dice, drawing cards, playing action cards to accomplish the, their, to increase their department levels, attack other players to accomplish these goals, these statuses in the middle. First person to status five is the winner. Civility really has an interesting feature. There's a lot of games out there that are asymmetrical, in which the different armies have different abilities, different players have different abilities. This one has a very strong feeling of that. When I play the early men, for example, and all my department levels start at one, you sit there and feel like, oh, it's such a disadvantage. But once you get to a certain level, all your things are doubled, all your increases are doubled, and suddenly you feel very powerful. So there's this back and forth feeling between the different ones. Using the, the dice to pick your actions limits the actions that you can take on your turn, and also knowing when to play your cards. So you normally can play two cards a turn, so you want to save up a hand of cards to be able to play them at the right point, uh, but you're always you know, your actions and everything is also determined by that status card in the middle. So there's really a lot going on in the game. It's certainly a heavy possibility this game is confrontational as players attack each other. You're tempted sometimes not to attack to get that very powerful pacifist perk. At the same time, you can have the pacifist perk if I'm constantly beating you and upgrading all my levels. So there's a lot going on, building armies, building bridges, moving armies, uh, upgrading your department levels, but the game itself is not that complicated. And you're watching what other players do, but you're also watching yourself increasing on your levels. So in a moment, we're gonna show you a link if you wanna support this game, which is on Kickstarter right now. Remember what I showed you was a, a basic prototype, but that is how the game plays Civility.
Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.